Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Celestron Nexstar 4SE. Now, I reviewed this telescope almost a decade ago in a cold, wintry environment, and it was really windy, and the audio was pretty poor. So I'm basically going to be refilming this today, but in the decade since I've used the Nexstar 4SE, a lot has changed in the astronomy industry with smart telescopes and telescopes that can be controlled with cell phones. So that begs the question, does this telescope still stand up to all the others in 2023? So I'm going to address that question, discuss the telescope in depth here. So let's go ahead and get started. Now beginners and experts alike will love the Nexstar 4SE because of the type of telescope it is. This is a Max Zutov Cassegrain telescope design, which is awesome because it's very maintenance free. The big thick Max Zutov corrector lens here at the front is essentially sealed in place at the factory so you don't have to worry about aligning the mirrors or what we call collimation. So essentially the way this telescope works is the light comes in and passes through this big Max Zutov corrector lens and hits the primary mirror that reflects the light back to the secondary spot, and then the secondary spot reflects it back down through the tube and into the eyepiece. What this results in is very high-powered views of the planets, the moon, globular clusters, and things like that. And it's great for beginners because what do beginners mostly want to observe? The planets and the moon, and for good reason. Jupiter and Saturn are absolutely stunning. Mars looks great too. So the Nexstar 4SE is an awesome option for beginners that are looking for high powered views of the planets. They want to see you know, the belts on Jupiter and the rings of Saturn. The 4SE can provide that in a very small portable package. A great thing about the 4SE is it allows you to learn and grow with your telescope and desire to learn more about the night sky. So as you use the 4SE, you might want to upgrade to a bigger telescope that gives you more aperture so you can see more. Uh, in the astronomy community, we say there are certain telescopes that are hobby killers. And these are usually department store telescopes that are absolutely terrible, they're cheap, and most people that look through them are like, wow, this sucks, I never want to use this again. Well, this is definitely not a hobby killer. This is where you want to start. It allows you to learn the software, the intricacies of telescopes and how to observe the night sky before you jump to a bigger, less portable setup. And so this is a great way to jump into the hobby without you know, biting off more than you can chew. But also, once you do you know, get a bigger telescope, like I have a bunch of telescopes, I still love the 4SE because it is so portable and I can view right away with it. So it's just an awesome telescope overall to learn and grow with and help you learn the night sky. All of the Nexstar SE telescopes include an excellent tripod. So you'll get good stainless steel tripod legs. They're fully adjustable for height and you have a good accessory tray as well. So you don't have to worry about upgrading the tripod. It's ready to go out of the box, which is a great touch. And for the Nexstar 4SE and 5SE, this tripod only weighs 10 pounds and the mount is only seven pounds. So it's very portable. If you need to pick up your telescope and move it to somewhere else in your yard or if a tree gets in the way while you're observing while you're camping, it's very easy to move this, do a new skyline, and in like two minutes, you can be up and running again. So I like to keep my camera adapter in here, uh, another eyepiece to help me, you know, narrow the field of view and get closer to the planets. So it's just a very compact, portable setup and an excellent tripod overall. If you don't have an external lithium battery and you observe at home a lot, one accessory I would definitely pick up is just a standard Celestron AC adapter. This has a uh, two amp output and will obviously allow you to keep your telescope powered indefinitely so you don't have to worry about any power issues when you're at home. One thing that Celestron has done in the last decade is improve the red dot finder, and this was surprising to me. This finder is so much better than it used to be, so huge props to Celestron listening to their customers and improving this design. It now has really good solid adjustments so you can properly align your telescope with your red dot finder and be observing in seconds. So really, having a properly aligned finder is essential to observing, otherwise you're gonna have a lot of frustrating nights, and it's really simple to do. All you do is take your telescope and find something unique, maybe a, uh, you know, a smokestack or a power line, a tree, something that you can easily find in your red dot finder as well, and you just line the two up. So once you're done with that, then you go and point your telescope at Jupiter, and Jupiter should be right in your eyepiece. So very simple, but a very critical step in setting up your telescope is to properly align your red dot finder. And again, huge props to Celestron for improving this design 
it now does not need upgrading and works right out of the box. Now one of the coolest features on this little Mac is the inclusion of a flip mirror. Now what that is, it's a little mirror inside the rear cell here and it will either lay down flat and let the light come all the way through the telescope to the camera or it will flip up and allow the light to come through the eyepiece. So that allows you to quickly switch between taking pictures and viewing with your eye. And that's especially fun for kids because they may want to be taking pictures of some stars or the moon or something, but also see it through their eye. So all you have to do is just flip between the two real quick and refocus. So you can quickly switch between camera and eyepiece whenever you want, a luxury that you don't have on many other telescopes. All right, so let's talk a little bit about photography with the Nexstar 4SE. Now, fortunately, the rear cell is threaded for a camera adapter. So if you just unthread that there, you can attach a DSLR by using a Celestron T adapter for Max Zutov telescopes. To install your DSLR then, you just need a T-ring for your camera. And this is a standard 42 millimeter T-ring, so I'll just attach that. And then the Celestron Max Zutov T adapter just screws right into that, threads in there I should say. Just get that knurled ring and give it a twist, tighten it down, and then the end of this will thread right into the rear cell of the Max Zutov. And you can tighten that down, and the cool part is if you want to change the orientation of your DSLR, you just unthread that a little bit, and you can change the orientation and re-thread it down. Now one thing just to be aware of when you are using a DSLR is you don't want your camera to run into the mount. So just be careful that if you're you know, taking an image of something that's pretty high in the sky, that you make sure you're not going to run into your mount before you slew over to it. And that's pretty much it. Now, the other way you can do photography is with a dedicated planetary camera. Now, this will give you um, a lot smaller field of view. So if you want, you know, bigger, closer up pictures, planetary cameras are a great way to go. So shots of the moon, planets, that sort of thing. And the cool part is these use a standard one and a quarter inch eyepiece barrel. So you can put a filter right on the front here. So if you want a kind of a sharper view, put on a ultraviolet IR cut filter, and that will just take the place of the eyepiece. So I'll put my eyepiece in my accessory tray and drop in my planetary camera. And just like that, say I'm imaging the moon, I can swap between a wider field DSLR image, and then I can swap up to the planetary camera and take a closer image with this one. So overall there's quite a few options for photography on this little 4SE Mac. Uh, one thing I definitely recommend though if you're going to use a DSLR is to use a wireless shutter control so you don't you know make your mount move and vibrate and blur your photos or use the included shutter release from Celestron. So if you're able to connect this to your DSLR uh, it will actually plug right into the mount and you can release your shutter that way without vibrating your mount. And just to show you what a little 4-inch matte cast can do, this is Jupiter with a Player One Astronomy Neptune C2 camera and a Celestron UV IR cut filter. And you can see the belts clearly there and once I stack this, you'll actually be able to pull out a lot of detail in the clouds of Jupiter and see a lot of those storms. This little four inch Mac also provides some awesome terrestrial views as well, as you can see by this snowy scenic mountain shot. One interesting thing about the 4SE and 5SE tripod is it does include a little polar wedge. So if you want to try long exposure astrophotography, you can use this. Uh, to use it, you simply unthread it. And once it's unthreaded, you push up on this bar here until you find your latitude. and then lock it in place. 
And now your telescope can be used in equatorial, equatorial mode. Now the interesting thing about this is there's no fine adjustments. So I wish you luck in getting a good polar alignment. So it's a great idea. I mean, you certainly can try to do long exposure astrophotography in equatorial mode. Uh, but again, the lack of fine adjustments makes getting a good polar alignment very difficult, but it is a nice touch and a good idea. I will say, although it's not super functional, the telescope does look pretty darn cool in the equatorial mode. So I guess that's a plus. Now at the front of the mount here, you do have an auxiliary port. So if you want to install like a Wi-Fi module or anything like that, you certainly can. As well as that DSLR shutter control port here. And then at the front, you have your, your battery bay. Now, I don't know if my hands are warm enough to pry this off to open that. Let's see if I can get it. Oh, yep, there we go. So there's a, uh, a spot for eight AA batteries there. I would recommend a external lithium battery, but in, in a pinch, these eight uh, AA spots will do just fine as well. So even though, again, this is a pretty portable, small setup, you do have some room to expand. This hand controller uh, has 40,000 objects in its database. Now you're never going to look at 40,000 objects. And frankly, this telescope is not capable of showing you all 40,000 objects that are in the database. But you get a huge variety of objects you can see. So stars, double stars, globular clusters, open clusters, uh, galaxies, planets, the moon, all of those you can certainly see in the next R4 SE. Galaxies might be a little bit tricky, but if you're at a dark sky site, you definitely could see uh, the core of the Andromeda galaxy for sure. No telescope review is complete without showing you how loud or how quiet the mount is. And I think this one's pretty quiet. I'll let you judge for yourself. Not bad. So why do I argue that this is one of the best beginner telescopes out there compared to smart telescopes or cell phone controlled telescopes? And a huge reason for it is that it gets you outside. And I have nothing against people that, that use smart telescopes. I think they're amazing and produce amazing pictures and whatnot. But once you set it up and it starts doing its thing, you can go inside and go to bed for the night. This gets you under the stars, learning about the stars. What's the alpha star in a constellation? What's the beta star? learning about galaxies and globular clusters, being outside really makes you develop a love for astronomy. So my first view of anything through a telescope was the planet Saturn. And when I saw those rings, I was instantly hooked. And I decided to go into astronomy professionally. And I enjoy, you know, teaching students about astronomy and doing outreach. And the 4SE, even though it's probably considered a beginner telescope, I love the 4SE. It's so portable. I use mine on most evenings that I can. It's so quick to take outside with the internal battery bay or if you want to just uh, attach an external battery, you have instant power and can set it up within just a few minutes. So this really to me is the ultimate kind of beginner design because I can take pictures quickly, use the flip mirror and go right to the eyepiece and view it with my eye. And then I can go back to taking pictures again if I want. So great integration of a flip mirror by Celestron in this beginner mount. Awesome choice to use the Max Sutov cast grain, a maintenance free design that gives you high contrast views of the planets and the moon. So overall, I really think the 4SE is one of the best beginner telescopes out there just because it gets you under the stars, it's portable and it's powerful as well. All right guys, well that's my review of the Celestron Nexstar 4SE. This is an awesome telescope for beginners, advanced users, anyone. It is so portable, so durable, extremely reliable. It uses the awesome Maxutov Cassegrain optical design. Nice four inch uh, diameter here. Uh, it's just an awesome telescope. If you have any doubts about this telescope, I hope after watching this that those doubts go away because this telescope is phenomenal. For $500 right now as of December 2015, this telescope really can't be beat in value. You even get a puller wedge with this thing, um, a Nexstar Plus hand controller. There's just so many good things that I can say about this telescope. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, some stunning views here today for you. Kind of froze today, but it was worth it. Hope you guys have a good one and take care.
So I'm going to show you how to do a quick skyline and just show you how easy this is. So first things first, you're going to turn your telescope on and it will load up and you're going to press enter on your hand controller here and select the method as skyline, okay? And the time is 18, 10 and 45 seconds. It's standard time. Today is the Oh, let me go back there. Standard time, today is the ninth. And now I'm just gonna find three stars and make a triangle. So I don't wanna find stars that are in a straight line. I kinda wanna make a triangle. And to do that, I have access to the summer triangle right now, which is an asterism. So that's a perfect way to do this. I'm going to slew over to Vega, and then I'm gonna do Deneb and Altair and get this aligned. And I'm gonna do it with my camera. You can do it with your eyepiece, that's just fine. But just to show you how this works, I'm gonna use my camera. Got my red dot finder on. Okay, so if you come check out my camera here, I've got my first star right on the viewfinder here. So now what I'm going to do on my hand controller, I'm going to center object number one. And I've, I've already got it in the center though, so I'm gonna hit enter. And then it's gonna ask you to align. And to align it, it's just going to slow the motor down, and you just want to get it right in the center. So I'm going to get it right in the center. As close as I can. A little higher. Okay, perfect. So once I've done that, and it's in the center, I'm going to hit align. And then it's going to ask me to go to the second object. So now, I'm going to slew over to Altair and use my finder. All right, and just like that, now you can see Altair is on my screen. So I'm gonna hit center object two, I'm gonna hit enter, and now it's going to ask me to align. So we'll get it nice and centered. Okay, and it's pretty much in the center, so now I'm gonna tap a line. And then one more object, object three. I'm gonna scroll up here. And actually, if I go too high, I'm gonna run my camera into my mount, so watch this. I'll just take my camera off real quick. And this is where the flip mirror comes in a lot of handy. You can just flip it over to the eyepiece and keep going. All right, now I'm gonna focus in the eyepiece here. Perfect, that looks centered. So I'm gonna hit center and align. And now watch, here comes the magic. Skyline, please wait. It's building a model in its database and will tell me if we're successful or not. Match confirmed. Hit enter to continue. Enter. Okay, turn your star pointer off. Okay, and now I'm ready to go anywhere. So I can hit solar system, Jupiter, and now my telescope's gonna slew all the way to Jupiter. So you can see just how easy the Skyline system is in just a couple minutes. You can be up and running in no time. And we'll see how good this puts Jupiter in the, the eyepiece. There's Jupiter. So now if I look in my eyepiece, I'm gonna get a lot closer than that. Um, Cause this is a DSLR. This is gonna give you a wide field of view, but you can see Skyline pretty much put it right in the center. So it's a very simple system.